Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of my ZBrush tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about Z-Spheres. So when you first open up ZBrush, you can see that you have a blank canvas. On the right you have your simple brush. So go ahead and click on that. Click on the little tool palette menu here and go down and select Z-Sphere. So once you have, you can click and drag out a Z-Sphere and go up here and turn edit mode on. So for Z-Spheres, there's only a couple of tools that you need to use. Your draw tool, move, scale, and rotate. And that's it. So when I'm drawing, I wanna make sure that I push X and that's gonna turn on symmetry mode so you can draw on both sides at the same time. And we're gonna hit Q to go into draw mode and we also want to turn on our floor over here, so hit the on the right side, there's a little button for floor, and that way you can make sure that your mesh is actually facing toward you. Make sure that the blue line is pointing right at you. Hit Q, go to draw, and draw out a shape. Usually I'm going to draw out another shape on top of that, and then I'm going to push W, switch to move mode, and grab that sphere, and drag it out, and drag it down. The nice thing about this is as soon as you rotate around, you see that your floor dropped right down to the bottom of your object. Hit Q, go back to draw mode, draw out another sphere, press W, go to move mode, drag and pull that down again, and as soon as I rotate around, now the floor is down at the bottom of the object. If you want to snap to the side view or the front view really quickly, make sure that you press W so you're in move mode, and hold shift and click and drag, and it will snap to whichever view you're closest to. Super, super handy if you want to get your object lined up or make sure that the legs are straight from the right angle. You go down and you want to draw on some feet, so press Q to draw, draw out a sphere, and pull it forward, kind of adjust that a little bit. Typically, feet have a middle joint, so with Z-spheres, you can add joints in if you go into draw mode, press Q, and you select a portion in between the joint, you can just click on it and it'll insert another Z-sphere right where you clicked. For our character, hit Q, go to draw mode, draw out a sphere, hit W, go to move mode, drag that up, we'll hit Q and I'm gonna put one more sphere right there in the middle, just so I can bend around the torso a little bit. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna draw on two sides, those will be my shoulders. I'll draw one more on top of that and that is gonna be where we pull out the arms. This will be the elbow, so then I'm gonna draw on another sphere in this direction, hit W, pull it down, and these will be where the hands are, but we're not gonna do that yet. But you can see here that I drew these shoulders a little too close together, and that's okay, you can just hit W, pull them out a little further, and that opens up space here where then you can see that middle part, so you can hit Q and actually draw where your neck is gonna go. If you zoom in on this, you wanna draw in one more Z-sphere right at the bottom of this. Hit E, and go into scale mode and scale this down until it's a little thinner on top there. Then I'm going to draw one more on top and this will be the head. And I can hit E and I can scale that up if I want that to be a little bigger. Once you get to this point, you're going to have to do some adjusting because obviously the character is leaning backward and the feet aren't right and the hips aren't right. So if you change your brush size, if you hold S and you drag out your brush size, you'll notice that it moves multiple things around at the same time. That's because my brush size is really big. The bigger your brush size, the more spheres it affects depending on where you're clicking and dragging. But if you make your brush size as small as you possibly can, like you put it to one, then it's only gonna affect one sphere at a time. So both modes are very useful. I usually keep my brush size at one just because I like the precision of having one sphere at a time. I recommend that you keep symmetry mode on while you're doing all of this, because if you turn it off, it's gonna start to get really wonky and it's not gonna be able to track everything correctly and your whole mesh is gonna get messed up. So keep symmetry mode on. Scale, scale. Head is way too big, we're gonna scale that too. After messing around with this a little bit, I kinda got a character shape going here. So if you just wanna make one section of the arm a little bit bigger, just for dramatic effect, you can draw in a couple of spheres, draw one in the middle, and if you use the scale tool, make sure your brush is set to one, by the way. Zoom way in and just click and drag and scale up the sphere in the middle, and it only affects the section in the center right there. So now that you know the basic functions of Z-spheres and you got a little character going here, I'm gonna tell you about some of the advanced tools for Z-spheres. 
If you zoom in on your character, press W, go into move mode. When you click on a sphere, you see these little triangles in the middle. The triangles represent a bone, or if you've used Maya or Blender, or done any animation or rigging, that's kind of what this is. The circle at the base of the triangle represents the center of a Z-sphere. So if you click on a sphere, you can see this one represents this big sphere here, and this one represents the one behind it. So this is a good way to track spheres. If you click on a sphere and you don't know where the center is, you can find it right away. Click on this one, you see the center is right there, and it shows you the ones that are attached to it. So if you're in move mode and you click on the triangle portion, this allows you to manipulate that part of the joint instead. So if you're clicking on the circle, it moves the center. If you're clicking on the triangle, it moves the joint in the direction that the triangle is pointing. I'm gonna make some hands for this guy, so I'm gonna go around here to the end of my arm joint. Make sure your brush size is set to one. Hit Q to go into draw mode. If you draw out one sphere, you see the triangle here with the little circle. Click on the circle while you're in draw mode to draw another sphere and another. Just click on the circle, pan around, click on the circle again. And now all of these are connected together as one. This allows you to create hands a lot more precisely because when you pull all these out, it allows you to scale them and move them a lot more uniformly. And if you scale the base here, you can see that it's gonna make the finger lengths a lot more proportionate the way that you actually want them to look. Q, go to draw mode. I'm gonna click and drag and hold shift and it's gonna make another one the same size as the one before it. Click and drag, hold shift. I'm gonna do that a couple of times for each finger. Click and drag, hold shift. Click and drag, hold shift, click and drag, hold shift. So now I can take my move with W and I can move these around and manipulate them. In a very short amount of time, I've created hands. And hands are so complicated to make or sculpt or do anything with. Well, rather than having to change your brush size, you can push W, go to move mode, hold control and click on the center of any joint chain and it will move the joint and the rest of the chain with it. So hold control in move mode, click and drag. Hold control, move mode, click and drag. On the right side here, there is the adaptive skin button. So click on that menu, and that is going to open up a few options here. What you need to do is you need to zoom out, maybe frame up your character a little bit, and click preview. When you click preview, you can see a version of what your character is going to look like. Next to the preview button here, there's the density. So right now the density is set to two. If you change your density to three or four, it ups the resolution of your mesh. So I'm gonna turn my resolution down to three. That looks pretty fine for now. And if you don't like the way your character looks, this is just a preview. You can go and press the preview button and turn it back off and continue working on your Z-spheres if you want to adjust things. After you've turned the preview for adaptive skin on and you've set your density to whatever it is that you want, don't worry about the rest of this menu here. You can also change the Dynamesh resolution, but I would leave that alone. Now you want to go up to the top underneath your tool menu here and hit Make Poly Mesh 3D. And now over here down below the tool menu, you have a couple of choices. You see your simple brush, you see the Z-sphere that you created originally, and now it has made a copy of your Z-sphere mesh as its own poly mesh 3D. Now you can take this, select a brush, like the clay buildup brush, and you can just start sculpting on it, and you have a base mesh for your character made out. So say you make this character model and you like what you've got, but then you decide you don't really like it, you want to go back and you want to mess with your Z-spheres again. So if you look under Subtool, the only thing that's under Subtool is this Polymesh 3D. But on the right side toolbar, the Z-sphere version of it still exists. If you notice here, the names are different. This one is called PM3D, that means Polymesh 3D. The one right next to it is called Z-sphere 1. That's the Z-sphere that you originally created. So if you click on that, now under Subtool, it shows your Z-Sphere model. And if you go down to Adaptive Skin again, you can turn Preview Mode off. Go into Move Mode and mess around with your Z-Spheres as much as you want and create a new Make Poly Mesh 3D in the shape that you want. That's a whole lot of information, but that's everything you need to know about Z-Spheres. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate it. I hope you learned something today. If you like my video, leave me a like below. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future tutorials. Next week, I will actually take you through some sculpting and I will show you how to customize your user interface, use some of the brushes and tools that I use when I go through my process. So again, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.